Let me begin by doing a sound check. Uh, anybody having any difficulty hearing me? I don't sound like the voice of God to myself, so I'm wondering if something is wrong here. I take the reality of God very seriously. I am utterly convinced that there is a more, to use William James's marvelously generic term for the sacred, a stupendous, wondrous more. And I am convinced that this more has been experienced in every human culture and that the origin of the major religious traditions lies in experiences of the more. I began to think of God as the encompassing reality, or if you will, the encompassing spirit. But when I use the word spirit, I don't mean something completely separate from the world. Rather, I see the world as infused with that spirit. So in language from the book of Acts, I began to think of God as the one in whom we live and move and have our being. That we are in God like fish are in water. It was the way the elites had of saying, we didn't put the world together this way, God did. Oh, I can't resist a little aside. The modern version of that is the invisible hand. If we just get government out of the way, an invisible hand will control things for the great good of everybody. And very few people note that the invisible hand typically has one finger raised. Systemic justice is concerned with the way the structures of society work and, this is critically important, the litmus test for whether or not a given um, system is just or not is you look at the results. Systemic justice is a results-oriented justice. If you have a system that produces a pretty large and radically impoverished class, then no matter how fair the rules are enforced and no matter how democratically those rules are made, it's not a just society. If you have a society in which 1% of the population own 43% of the wealth, it's pretty clear that 1% has structured the society, so it kind of worked out that way, and they have a tremendous amount of power to sustain it. That's the figure in the United States, by the way. The wealthiest 1% of us own 43% of the wealth in this country. I'm not in the least bit interested in making the middle class feel guilty because there are poor people and we're comfortable. What I want to do is I want to get the bottom 98% of us angry as hell. We are to love what God loves. And what does God love? Here the best known verse in the New Testament, John 3.16, provides the answer. For God so loved the world. God loves the world, not just me, not just you and me, not just Christians, not even just human beings, but the whole of creation. Why do you seek the living amongst the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Think of this story parabolically, 
believe whatever you want about whether it happened that way. But think of what this story means. And again, it means more than one thing. You're not going to find Jesus in the land of the dead. The tomb couldn't hold him. He was ex executed, crucified by the powers that ruled his world, but they couldn't stop him. He's out there again. He's loose in the world. And he's still recruiting for the kingdom of God.